What is up guys and welcome back to the horror franchise tier list series and now we are at chapter six the horror six schools for those of you guys that have not followed this series thus far obviously this is the sixth one you got five more you need to catch up on but I started with around 30 something franchises I believe and we've gone through every single one of the installments the sequels the three equals and now we are at chapter six and it's about to get rough. As always, the categories from best to worst is horror classics, bloody good time, kills two hours, painful, and slow death. And kicking it right off with Paranormal Activity, as always, we have Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension. Now, this was a first time watch for me, as most of these paranormal movies, I fell off after the third one, didn't have much interest left. And I gotta tell you, this one was easily the worst of the bunch for me. I hated this. This is a slow death for me. Not only is it all of the continuous issues that we have with the Paranormal Activity franchise where it's just slow and boring and just takes forever to get to the point and then it gets crazy for like 10 minutes and then the movie ends and adds like maybe this much more to the lore and story. This one has all of that, except it completely loses the point of what made the Paranormal Activity movies popular in the first place, which is having a real-world scenario, having this camera going in a regular room, and showing a ghost do shit where you can't see it. And this movie decides to turn the ghost into, like, this horribly CGI'd Venom fucking thing, where it's, like, these black goo, and so every single time that you would normally just see nothing and see a cabinet open or see a door slam shut or somebody get shoved, now you see this black ooze thing do all of it and so it just it completely kills whatever little bit of effectiveness these movies had and so the whole time I'm sitting there just bored out of my mind frustrated as shit and by the time you get to the end it's like oh we really needed like six fucking movies to get to that what are you guys doing and unfortunately we still got one more to go Really quick before we continue on with this tier list, let's shift over to something that you're definitely going to want to hear about. I don't know how your spring and summer has been so far, but in Georgia we have had possibly the rainiest season that I have ever experienced since living here. And this is where I wish I would have heard of Vessi shoes sooner. Vessi shoes are 100% waterproof, which is perfect for the always unpredictable weather. They are made of Dymatex, which is a dual climate knit material that keeps your feet cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And it certainly doesn't seem like these should be waterproof because they are so comfortable, lightweight, and breathable. I got this pair of Everyday Move slip-ons and in less than a week I can tell you that these are the most comfortable pair of shoes that I currently own. I have wide feet so many brands tend to feel too cramped but Vessi leaves my feet feeling relaxed while also fitting snug. And as that Georgia heat is starting to drop for fall season my feet have stayed cool during the sunny days and remained warm at night when it's over 15 degrees cooler. Vessi's have become my go-to shoes sitting by my door and if you want to check them out and get a pair for yourself. Check out my exclusive link down in the video below and get $25 off each pair of adult shoes that you purchase. So you go grab the only pair of shoes that you will ever need and thank you Vessi for sponsoring today's video. Next we move over to a movie that for some reason I still find myself having to talk about it. Freddy's Dead The Final Nightmare. Those of you guys that have been following me for any amount of time know that this is the movie I hate the most in the world, and so it's going straight to slow death. If there was a category below slow death, I would reserve that just for Freddy's Dead. I despise this movie. I understand some people can have fun with it. I mean, I have fun with some of the hated franchise um, installments in the Friday the 13th franchise, the Halloween franchise. I get it. If you're not really that emotionally tied to Freddy or the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, I guess I could see somebody having fun with the ultra cartoonish nature of this movie. But for me, this whole film, start to finish, top to bottom, embodies everything that I hate about the bad Nightmare on Elm Street films. Everything that I hate about the comedic version of Freddy Krueger. Everything that I hate about bad slasher sequels. I just think this thing is a train wreck, it's a travesty, it's an abomination. There's nothing positive that I can say about it. I just fucking despise this movie. And for the love of God, can you guys stop asking me in the comment section, what's worse, this movie or Freddy's Dead? If I hate this movie more than any other movie that exists for my own personal reasons, you know the answer to that question. You're the 10,000th person to make that joke. It's not funny anymore. Neither is this movie. 
Fuck it. Moving over to my beloved Halloween franchise, we've got part six, The Curse of Michael Myers. And I'm not going to do separate for the producer's cut, the theatrical cut. Fuck all that shit. They both are kind of the same for me. Um, they're different cuts of the film, but they have the same amount of issues. And I'm going to stick this in Kills 2 Hours. I think it's fine. I don't understand the Halloween fans that are enamored with this movie, that think that it's great, and that actually praise Paul Rudd's performance. What the fuck? But there's a lot of good atmosphere here. I like the mask. I like the performance from George P. Wilbur. There's some really good kills. It is bloody. It is one of the more um, unforgiving, brutal of the early Halloween films. And, you know, there's aspects of this movie that I can have fun with. It's a decent enough time for as much of a gigantic mess that it is, no matter what cut of the movie you watch. But there's a lot of fucking problems here. I mean, the Cult of Thorns storyline, the Man in Black, and the reveal with that, and the whole thing with, you know, one of the cuts, Michael's trying to impregnate uh, Jamie, and the child is his, and it's just, it's a bunch of what the fuck were you thinking type ideas. So sometimes the weirdness is a little appealing, but I'll, I'll just never understand those that think this is a top-tier Halloween film. Moving over to Texas, we've got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. This is the prequel to the 2003 remake, and this one is going right next to Mikey at Kills 2 Hours. I've never been that enamored with this movie. I, again, like with Halloween 6, there is a healthy amount of people that think that this is not only one of the best, but is the best in the franchise. I don't quite get that. It's brutal. It's bloody. Uh, you get a lot of the same tone and a lot of the same kind of cinematography and the look of the remake, which I love. But for me, where this certainly has some attempts at story and some attempts at character work with the Vietnam War and uh, draft dodgers and things like that, it's just the version of a prequel that I don't care for. And you guys know I don't like prequels very much. You know, there's very rarely do I praise one. And this is one that does all of the things that aggravate me to where they have to stick in all these little winks and nods and Easter eggs from the movie that they are prequeling. And it's all shit that doesn't matter. Like, I don't care how Sheriff Hoyt lost his front teeth. I don't care how the dude ended up in the wheelchair with no legs. I don't care about a lot of weird, tiny details that they spend narrative focus on in this movie. I think that Leatherface is awesome. I think this is possibly the best look of Leatherface, like when he actually makes his leather face and takes the, the face off of the one of the main characters. I think that looks the most human-like, the most human skin, where his mask in the remake doesn't quite have that effect to me. So there's a lot of things in this that I do enjoy. Uh, the, the brutality of it, the unforgiving nature all the way through to the end. It, it's a good Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, but it's not a great one. Now we go over to the world of pain and pleasure in the Hellraiser franchise with Hellraiser Hellseeker. Now I'm going to stick this one in painful. It's almost a slow death, but it doesn't quite offend me on that level. None of the Hellraiser movies do actually, surprisingly. But this is, I, I believe, one above my least favorite of the franchise, and it shares all of the same problems of my least favorite of the franchise, which is that this is very clearly a generic spec script that they just threw Pinhead in in a few pages, and so it doesn't feel like it belongs in the franchise. It's not interesting to those of us that want the elements of this franchise. The main character is an absolute douchebag that you do not enjoy following, don't care what happens to him, don't care whether or not he ends up in hell, or wherever the third act's going to take him, which is fairly obvious. The only redeeming factor for me, which is not a very strong one because I think she's horribly misused and underused, is that you get Kirsty Cotton back in this movie. And I think that even though the twist was completely obvious and telegraphed, I think that it's a somewhat entertaining thing to do with her character that's a little bit out of left field. So... I don't hate this movie as much as some, but it's certainly not a movie that I ever care to watch again. Now we are at Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives, an absolute fan favorite. And for me, I'm going to stick it in bloody good time. It's never been one of my favorites of the franchise, although it is, I think, number three in my ranking. But it, it, there's really only two Friday the 13th films that I genuinely love, and that's the remake and part four. Part six, I have a really good time with, but... It kind of loses a bit of the franchise's edge to me in favor of some goofiness, which is fun. It makes the movie stand out. It's a good, interesting direction to take the franchise, especially after part, after part five, where they kind of go in this more zombie route. 
But um, as much as I can have fun with this one when I'm in the mood for it, there's some good characters, there's some pretty good kills here. I like the Jason. I don't love the, the whole Home Depot carpenter look that they gave him, but the, the performance is good. Um, this is still just one of those Friday the 13th movies that I, I'm very rarely in the mood for, which I can say about all but two of the franchise. Now we are at Alien Covenant, and just like with Prometheus, never been that fond of this one, sticking it in kills two hours. Now this one's slightly more appealing to me than Prometheus because it has more alien, aliens type stuff in there, which is what I go to these movies for, but it's also really struggling for attention with the alien stuff and the Prometheus stuff with Michael Fassbender. And, uh, it ended up being a movie that tried to please everybody and I find doesn't necessarily please anybody because those that love Prometheus didn't get enough of Prometheus stuff in this and those that walked in thinking this was going to be an alien film, which the poster, the name, the uh, trailers, all the marketing would have led you to believe, didn't get enough of that because it was just sprinkled throughout and then you get some tacked on generic run-of-the-mill xenomorph shit in like the last 15 minutes. So... It's fine. There's a lot of great camera work, a lot of great visuals here, just like with Prometheus. Some great performances, again, by Michael Fassbender. Fascinating character, but it's just not what I want when I watch an Alien movie. Now we're at Curse of Chucky, and this is going right up there with Bloody Good Time. This is one of my favorites of the franchise. and in a, It's a movie that I liked right away, but I've liked more as time has gone on. This, to me, is the best thing that Don Mancini has done since he has taken over complete creative control of the franchise. I think that it's good to go back and have like the throwback nature that this does, try to get back to some of the flavor of the first film, a little bit more mystery, a little bit more build-up, certainly more tension. There's even some POV sequences here, which we haven't really seen much of since the first film. And uh, I think that Chucky is great here, both in the animatronics, the little bit of CGI that we get, but also just the voice work of Brad Dorif. I think there's some really good kills, some good one-liners. There's some really cool things done with the lore and the storyline and where this movie is placed in the timeline, which it kind of teases you with throughout. And I think they do a pretty good job with that. Uh, the setting, the house, is very cool, very Hitchcockian to me, and Fiona Dorff is fucking awesome. Now, when I watched this movie the first time, I was expecting her to suck because I'd never seen her before, and I just thought, oh, they just gave Brad Dorff's daughter just a job because it's Brad Dorff's daughter, but she's awesome. She continues to be probably the best part of the post-seed era of the Chucky franchise. There's still some goofy shit in here. <laughs> There's still some things that aren't necessarily what, what I want from Chucky. There's still some, uh, this, this refusal to move past Seed, where we got to make sure that Seed and all that is still part of the timeline. And I'll, I'll just never be a big fan of that movie ever. And so any bit of acknowledgement of it just kind of turns me off a bit. While I respect the fact that Don Mancini wants to keep it all and not disregard any of his work. I respect that. But uh, yeah, this, this is a really good Chucky movie. When I thought that going direct to video was probably going to kill this franchise, it actually kind of revived it. Moving past Chucky, we go to Resident Evil, the final chapter, and this movie's a piece of shit. It is slow death all the way. Uh, I've only seen it twice, once in the theaters and once last year when I was doing a review series for it. And it's just a jumbled mess. Narratively, it sucks. There's nothing interesting here that merits it being like this epic final chapter. The action is horribly choreographed and even worse shot and edited. It's just a jumbled, quick cut, gun fu mess. And uh, it, none of the action sequences are, are effective because of that. It's just incomprehensible. You don't know what the fuck you're looking at. You don't know what's being shot at. You don't know what's getting hit. It's just, it, it's garbage. Uh, the characters that we get in here they feel like they're just random resident evil characters um the build up that they had at the end of the fifth movie which i'm not a big fan of but the ending at least set up something interesting is kind of just thrown away at the beginning of this movie the answers you get at the end are not very satisfying regarding the true nature of alice and it doesn't even really feel like it ends the story it kind of leaves it open which is insulting whenever you try to build it up to the final it's like just fucking end it just be definitive could be in a money-hungry bitch. So yeah, not a fan of this one. Still think that Resident Evil, as much as I enjoy the Welcome to Raccoon City movie, still has yet to have the live-action adaptation that it deserves. Wrong Turn 6 Last Resort. 
aka the porn with a whole lot of plot and dialogue for a porn. This movie's fucking weird. I don't know. It's one of those films that a lot of people don't even know exist because even the box sets don't have Wrong Turn 6 as part of it, I believe. Um, but yeah, I, I watched this and it's just more straight to video, low hanging fruit, wrong turn shit. It's the three hillbillies back again trying to kill people, only now there's like this cult aspect to it. And it, it's straight up like a porno. There's a huge sexual tone to this movie. Like one dude literally gets fucked to death, basically. It's bad. It's bad. Like the, the Wrong Turn 5 and Wrong Turn 6 back to back was just fucking painful to watch. This is a franchise that I would probably say is the, the worst franchise overall that I've ever reviewed and was the hardest to get through. Uh, usually bad movies give me a lot of ammo to be very comedic and entertaining, but this is just, this is a franchise that was hard. And Wrong Turn 6 is one of the hardest parts of it. No pun intended. Now we are at Saw 6, which also, for some reason, is a fan favorite, and I'm going to stick it in Kills 2 Hours. Now, granted, I'm not the biggest fan of the Saw franchise, never have been. Saw 6 is one of those weird chapters where the franchise clearly kind of goes off a cliff a bit after Saw 3, in my mind, and then Saw 6 is that one random little spike you get as far as fan reception. Uh, maybe even critically, too. I haven't checked on that, but... A lot of people tend to like this movie much better than the sequels that surround it. And I think it's just okay. You know, you get the whole commentary on the medical profession and insurance and the doctors being put through all these traps. And I kind of get what they're going for there. There's a little bit of social commentary that's affected with that. But it's just more saw shit. It's just more people getting tortured and brutalized for 90 minutes. And you have this whole convoluted plot where <laughs> fucking... John Kramer, Tobin Bell, man, that dude plotted out like the next 40 years because we're got we're about to get another Saw reboot. This is gonna be the third reboot in a row uh, later next year. But yeah, it, it this franchise has always been entertaining in a, in a bad way for me to where all the little tiny things that he predicted and set up and had a plan B, C, and D for, it's just, it's fucking ridiculous. So if you're a Saw fan, I guess I understand why this one is better than the one surrounding it. But for me, it's just... Just another Saw sequel I don't give a fuck about. And finally, we've got Leprechaun Back to the Hood. And this thing sucked ass. Leprechaun competing hard with Wrong Turn for the worst franchise. At least Leprechaun is kind of self-aware with how bad it is. Uh, Wrong Turn sometimes doesn't seem like it is. But uh, yeah, this one, it kind of goes with that self-aware, goofy, almost parody tone that Leprechaun in the Hood had, but it takes it so much further into the stupid and is nowhere near as funny as or as entertaining as that last one. I don't even think that one's all that entertaining. So this one, constant attempts at humor that fell flat for me. The horror is barely existent in this. Warwick Davis, love him to death, but at this point, it's just like, dude, you, you've ran this character dry. There's nothing new to do with him. Uh, I guess that's not his fault. It's the people producing these movies, but... This is one that I watched and I just went, God damn, this is rough. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Be sure to check out Vessi down in the video description below and keep those feet dry. Please, if you enjoyed this, check a playlist over here for the rest of this franchise review series. And I'm also gonna put my wrong turn franchise review series up here. Check those out, guys. Please like and share this video and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the rest of this series. And we got Halloween ends fever coming the rest of this week. Thank you for watching as always and remember, Opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.